ISIS leader Jabba the Jihadi was captured and accused of enslaving women. The morbidly obese ISIS militant captured by Iraqi forces was one of the main architects of enslavement and sexual exploitation of Yazidi minority women. The 254 kilogram, and for Americans, that's 560 pounds, and for the British, it's 40 stone. Abu Abdul Bari, nicknamed Jabba the Jihadi by Iraqi forces after Jabba the Hutt, the slug-like gang leader in Star Wars, was known as the Mufti of Mosul. Abu ba Abdul Bari was also one of the main leaders of ISIS, known for his incendiary religious decrees or fatwas. Iraqi security officials said Bari, also known as Shifa al-Nima, provided the religious justification for the enslavement of hundreds of Yazidi girls and women after ISIS forced thousands of the religious minority to flee their homes in August 2014. And um, I just wanted to say that uh, this guy has put the fat in fatwa. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's, that's good. That's he bad. apparently had to be removed with a pickup truck because they couldn't get him into the police car. Wow. Because he was so large. Wait, who captured him? The Americans or the Iraqis? No, the Iraqi. Yeah. Uh, the Iraqi security forces. They probably they just captured him. him because he couldn't move. Apparently he's been in hiding for a while as well. I don't think he's been in hiding. He just, he, just, he just couldn't move. This is. I it, think... He, <laughs> yeah, he couldn't move, but he, I think he was also in hiding. Okay. I think it was... That's, I think they were... That, not music mutually exclusive <laughs> i think that's just his excuse like all the isis people are running away and you're like come come jabba let's go and he was like i'm hiding i i'm not gonna run right, exactly. <laughs> um, Apparently, you guys go I'll, the, you guys all go i'll, I'll just hold the first I'm here hiding, I'm <laughs> hiding. <laughs> apparently yeah. one of the americans or oh, no the british actually who had been working with the iraqis said to the iraqis Good luck hanging him. Oh, <laughs> Wait, is that how they kill in Iraq? Is that the execution is by hanging? Because yeah, or they have they public hang him because he was such a horrible guy. Oftentimes they will public hang people. Oh yeah. So he said to the security forces, "Well, good luck hanging him, guys." <laughs> I couldn't even get him in the truck. I'm sorry to laugh. I don't mean to laugh. No, it's uh, fine. But, um, no, but that's actually a yeah. legit concern because you're right. Because I remember they hanged Saddam. So the execution method right. in Iraq must be hanging. So I don't think they have made some... They have to build a stronger one for this guy. I mean, right. what's the rule? I like, mean, what if, if they hang him and it breaks and it falls? Does that mean he's free now? He gets to go? Because that how that's how it works... <laughs> That's how it works with stoning, right? So if they put you in the ground and they start stoning you and you manage to get out and run away, then the rule is that you're free. Like, but nobody ever. Oh, get... I didn't know that. Yeah, but no. But the thing is, nobody ever gets to like. Imagine being in dirt up, up all the way up to your neck. How the well, hell yeah, are you going to get? Who's going to get out? Nobody's going to yeah. get out. But if you do manage to get out, the rule is that you get to go free. So should be the same rule applies for hanging. Like if if they hang him and the whole thing just crashes, he'd be like, eh, I guess I'm free now. No, I don't know. But <laughs> except for he won't be able to walk away. You know, I so, see. You know, I were... see why this guy was into sex slavery. Nobody on the right mind would ever want to. Okay, never mind. Is that bad? Did yeah, I... he was apparently one of the ones who was giving all a lot of these justifications for the um, enslavement of uh, and the sex slavery of the Yazidi women. Oof. He was also accused of blowing up. Imagine the being forced to sleep with this guy. Jesus. Mosque of Prophet Jonah. You know, Jonah, who was yeah. inside the, lived inside the whale. Right. Apparently, there was a supposedly a mosque for where Prophet Jonah, he was, uh, he had apparently blown that up. He had blown up some other holy sites. Um, and he also issued some articles. Uh, I think one of them was called uh, 
the revival of slavery before the hour on Judgment Day, um, and uh, some issues that ISIS had brought up in their Wait, so was, was this a big? Was he just famous because he was this big, or was he like a big deal actually in ISIS? He was apparently one of their big, you know, guys in terms of Religious. issuing rulings, fatwas. Hmm. Um, issuing um, rulings on Islamic law and one of the ones that actually apparently sort of was the architect of the uh, idea that you could take these Yazidi women as war booty and then sell them as slaves because he was saying, look, it's uh, Islamically allowed and here's the reasons and he issued all these proclamations and then also fought for us yeah uh, i mean know, take calling take, for these take, things okay i know this this is controversial to a lot of woke people but technically you don't need a fatwa for sex slavery because it's already in islam uh fatwas right. are for new things uh this guy like this guy coming out like oh i'm gonna allow sex slavery no that's not you don't need to do that. Islam already allows that. Um, right. And I think he just was sort of, you know, codifying it for them. And he wrote an article in the revival of slavery before the hour, calling it Judgment Day. And um, he was talking about how you could capture them and how they're divided as spoils of war and how you would divide them and what the rules were and those sort of things. All right, so the top comments, let me tell you, read this this way. Stacy is saying his crime was mainly for blocking the door, preventing the woman from being able to walk out. <laughs> that was his <insane. laughs> <laughs> And the second top comment is Isaac. He's saying he looks like he skipped the Ramadan. So. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, Majid Nawaz said, because, you know, they were calling him Jabba the Jihadi. Right. Majid Nawaz said it was a good day for the force when they <laughs> captured him. <laughs> right. But, okay, just some so some understanding about Ramadan. Most, most people, I don't know if it's most, but a lot of people gain weight in Ramadan. Ramadan is not good for losing weight. Like, the people, right before sunrise, you eat a lot of food, usually sugary food, and then you don't eat, you starve yourself until sunset, and then you start binge eating on sunset. It's the worst thing for your health. I mean, you, there is a way to do it right that is not bad for your health, but most people, do, like, there is no, the rules of fasting in Ramadan doesn't have anything that makes it healthy. You could, t you, a lot of people, like there's a lot of Islamic articles like how to avoid gaining weight during Ramadan because a lot of people gain weight during Ramadan. You, you know, so, I mean, I, I wish, like, I mean, if Islam wanted to do fasting pr properly, they would be like, okay, this is how you start your fast. This is how you break your fast and all that. So, but anyways, but it's not, it's not, okay. But let me, let me read this by Luke. Luca, Lusa, Luca, um, he or she is, he is saying, okay, I, I try not to be judgmental <laughs> about anyone's appearance usually, but honestly, how did this guy become the leader of anything really? He can't even have it, leave his bed. Well, I mean, to read, to pass on religious fatwas, you don't need to leave your bed, <laughs> right? His job was not to fight in, in battle. His job was to just give like Islamic ideas and be like, this is Islamic. That's not Islamic. You could do that from your bed. Um, yeah, so. But on that note, Maji Nawaz, uh, from Quillam Foundation, they uh, in this article they interviewed him, and he said that he thought that people seeing the size of this guy and his sloth and everything, he thought that it would be psychologically um, very. Um, uh, the word escapes me. It would, it would be uh, not good for them that they would feel kind of depressed about it because they pride themselves on their fitness and their you know maintaining themselves and they're good warriors and then here's this sloth kind of guy 
But they're not and all warriors. They, they don't act like they're all warriors. They say like he we was have... talking about. I, I don't know. I'm just saying this was the comment that Majid had made with mm. regard to seeing this guy's size that it would be sort of saddening to them, and they would no, feel no, kind of I psychologically so. disappointed that their big guy, their you know holy guy, was this you know yeah. schlub. No, I don't think. I think if he gets more attention because he's this big, it's funny. Like they're like, yeah, we have this big guy who gives us. I don't know. You could use that in your advantage. I um, don't know. I'm yeah. just bringing up right. that so, something he had said in the live in the YouTube live chat. Izzy is saying, "How does this guy pray? Can can hardly imagine him getting down on his knees." Well, I could tell you that not only if you're fat, but also if you're like handicapped, or if you're old, too old to move, or if you have, you know joint you know muscle you know pain or something there are ways that you could just sit on your chair like you don't you could just go like this you uh, oh the podcaster can't see like you you don't have to if you have any physical problems that you can't do the proper islamic prayer there are ways for you to get away with it like you can sit on a chair and when you're supposed to go down and you know bow um you know you could just put your head down you know, there's the, yeah, there, there, there. Actually, not only there's ways to do this, they're so detailed about it. Like they're like, they have very detailed explanations of what you're supposed to do if you're handicapped or if you're too old or if you're too sick. Even if you're like, if you can't have, they have even tell you what you like. You need to do Islamic washing before you pray, right? The with water and your head and everything and your hands. They have they have rules for what to do if you can't have water touching your skin. Right? Like Islam is like it's such an all encompassing detailed religion about everything. They're like, okay, so if what if you can't touch water in your skin, you do this. If you can't if you don't have that that then you do this. If you don't have that either, this is what you do. they have like plan A, plan B, plan C, all the way to Z. Like they are they have fourteen hundred years to uh, thinking about these things, right? They now you they like you think like a lot of people have make memes about like what do you do if you have to pray in the moon? Which way do you pray to? And that usually they, that's a joke. But what they don't know is like, they actually think about these things. Like the Islamic scholars like come up with rules like, okay, so when, when we have Muslims in space, what do we do? How do we pray? Right? Where, which direction do we pray? Like they actually seriously come up with rules for that. Which way do we pray if we're right on the North Pole? Right? So if you're like just a little bit away from the North Pole, well, you know which way you're supposed to pray to, like where the with the place where the direction that Mecca is. But if you're right on the North Pole, then well, which direction? Now you have two to pick from two. So what do you do from there, right? So um, yeah, they, they think about these things. They have all the time and resources. And the come. Jewish scholars the same. Really, they argue if yeah. you have lab-grown meat, Ooh. can you certify it kosher? This was a big, huge discussion right. about the lab-grown meat. Right. Will it be kosher? Will it not be kosher? Because it's not actually slaughtered. Right. Huge discussion. And also, if Israel actually landed on the moon, like, they also were talking with it that didn't make it, but how would you, would, you know, how would you pray if you're on the moon and you didn't know what the time was? Right. You right. know, because they do it three. So, same. Right. Yeah. So yeah, this is the similarity between Islam and Judaism because uh, you know Christianity is more belief-based practice, still practice, but more based on belief. Uh, Judaism is more focused on practice, a little bit less than on belief, more on practice. Uh, Islam is really obsessed with both belief and practice. Uh, like coming up with so many details. So Judaism and Islam have that in common when it comes to coming up with so many details of what to do at this time, at the, you know, if this happens. Okay. All right, so... Atheists are under attack in many places. If they were Christians, their voices would be heard. If they were Jews, their voices would be heard. If they were Muslims, their voices would be heard. But they are atheists, and not many seem to be listening. Let's make it difficult for them to ignore us. We have built a global community, and now we are tearing down geographic, cultural, and language barriers so we can find each other and support each other. In the last decade, we have built the largest atheist community in the world. Now we are doing the same in other languages. With your help, we have started Atheist Republic in Persian and Arabic. 
انضميت مؤخرا لأسرة Atheist Republic وحيصير عندي بودكاست باللغة العربية As we grow, we can dedicate more time, staff and resources to start doing the same in Spanish, Portuguese, Malay, Bengali, Urdu, Hindi and other languages. We are providing community, support, informative content and amplifying the voices of those who need protection, especially in countries where people feel isolated simply for their lack of belief. We want to be there for them and we are only getting started. Help us get there. Check in the description for ways you can support our projects.